And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California, and want to jump right into it. Starting out with what Powell said and the reaction of the markets. Um, <clears throat> Powell came out hawkish and he raised rates 75 basis points. If you've been following our channel, that's exactly what we thought would happen. And alongside that, uh, the dollar got bullish, right? So when the Fed is hawkish, uh, bullish for the dollar. If he's dovish, um, bearish for the dollar. And I'm pretty sure we hit our target um, off the two-day time frame. We did say, hey, there's three drives of hidden bullish divergence coming back from this point right here. So you got one, two, three lower lows in RSI and one, two, three higher lows in price. Given a shot to the top side of the range and, um, you know, when I say this move is played out, um, that is lo and behold, um, we got to the top side of the range. The real top side of the range is this guy right here. And um, this is the scenario I drew out. Um, if we're going to see a bullish finish for the dollar through the end of the year would be something like this. You break this trend line, we hit 117, come back, retest it, maybe even retest 112, and then uh, shoot it up to the long-term target of 120. Um, that could happen over the next couple of, yeah, the next two months through the end of the year. Um, I think that is a likely scenario as the world kind of realizes what's happening when you raise interest rates on $400 trillion worth of global debt, um, there's going to be massive problems in currency markets and the safest currency to, currency to be in is the US dollar. Why is that? It's up, you know, 20% this year, or let's go January, January of this year, January. Okay, call that the low to the high, we're up 20%. And something interesting to note is that we've never seen, where the dollar has done year over year, 20% uh, gains, we've never seen the economy not go into a recession. So the exact opposite of what people think, um, and it's it makes sense, why if we have inflation, why is the dollar strong? Well, the dollar is measured against a basket of other currencies such as the German pound, which is now no di nose diving again, the Japanese yen falling off a cliff, and the Brazilian real has been holding up fairly well, not their stock market. Uh, the euro down again today, and then you got the bond yields up. Uh, more points for the bears. I, again, was saying yesterday, I think interest rates are going to continue to moonshot, and that's exactly what we have on the two-year. Um, probably heading up to that 5% target, sorry, 5.5%, you know, blow off top, 5.8%. Um, what else I wanted to point out? The 10-year had a blow off top, I think, today as well. I mean, a big move today, so up 0.6%. All right, I got 10 minutes on this video, so I better get into Bitcoin's price action before um, so that was our narrative kind of yesterday, I believe, uh, dollar up uh, and bearish for Bitcoin. And what do you know, we did head down to the bottom side of this range. We're holding the $20,000 pivot we've been talking about. Um, if we lose this $20,000 on a daily, um, looking for pretty swift move down. Um, Kind of got some mixed signals, but Stokes are crossing down from a high level. You've got a couple drives of bearish divergence. And where does the, um, I guess the minimum target I'm looking at, if we do lose this region, even on a 12 hour, probably good enough to get it. Uh, downside moves are gonna be greater. Yeah, so, you know, if we lose that region next stop, is 19.3 and I do believe that is probably going to be the line in the sand. If we start to lose that region, we're going to revisit the lows and still I will be waiting for a daily closure below the, you know, the last wick at 18.1 and then that'll give you continuation down to 17.6. 
Um, you know, full confirmation of a big downside move is going to be below those levels. So we're not out of the woods yet. Um, and looking for, you know, if somehow Bitcoin rallies up here again, the dollar would have to go down, uh, in my opinion, not financial advice, but any kind of a daily closure above here, I do believe we'll hit 22,382. Um, just bringing my vision back to the dollar. Um, this is right at the 618 fib, I believe. So um, that is where your classic bull or bear traps come in. If we do um, close above the 618, I do think the probabilities of at least testing the top side of this um, massive, call it descending, ascending triangle, whatever you want to call it. But I think that level will get tested and probably a sell on the first pass. So. Um, so not only did we get the dollar call yesterday, we got the uh, NASDAQ call, um, which was based off of this high right here and three drives of hidden bearish divergence, which again is in the context of a downtrend. That's when you will see hidden bearish divergence. And that was giving us a target yesterday um, off of that closure to the bottom side of the range. And now it's, um, a game of bounce and wait and see or not, you know, right? It does look like there's a good chance we could put in a bit of a bounce there at the bottom side of the range. Um, S&P, on the other hand, looks like it's got more to go uh, to the downside. If we look at this uh, consolidation, we're holding the downtrend. We're actually making the first higher high and high, could be a potential higher low. Uh, we got a higher low, higher high, and we need to put in a higher low for something different to happen there. Uh, dollar is getting a bit of a pump on the lower term time frame, so maybe this move still has some legs and the Dow, which was the strongest to bounce, putting in a local top. And I am looking at uh, bearish divergence, multiple drives coming all the way back from this point right here. And that would give us a minimum target of the 618 at uh, 30,370 if we close anywhere here or lower. Um, some would wait for a closure below this guy right here at 31,860, but I think you could front run the signal there. Um, what else do I got here? I know there's some news they wanted me to read. So um, if this move does start to get going, we lose the 618 and then we lose 28,776. I think your next target down for a potential bounce is going to be the bottom side of this trend line here at 26,545. NASDAQ, uh, we did say yesterday was the harbinger of death and despair, put in the weakest bounce and already back off to the downside along with the tech sector. Um, what else did I want to bring up? I guess we'll take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum looks like it wants to come down to the 21, test the bottom side of the range. And we do have some bearish divergence playing out here. So I'm looking for a target. Hold on the phone. Um, looking for a target down to 1472. As we just broke this trend line, getting a good retest. And we have some bearish divergence to dry variety gives you a shot to the bottom side of the range at 1471. Um, could we put in a higher low and maybe another lower high over here? Absolutely. Could get as high as the purple 200 and you could mediate that with a daily closure above 1662 or below. And that probably gets the next decent size move. Volatility is uh, decreasing, so you know you could see as this contracts, uh, Ethereum easily come back down and test the breakout level at fourteen hundred bucks. Um, <clears throat> what else am I looking at? So as far as posturing for the end of the week here, we got CME is going to be closing a weekly candle tomorrow. I don't know, maybe I had it on log scale. But that is the uh, massive trend line coming in all the way back from the highs for the year. Um, let's see here on CME. So, and again, this is the week we were expecting a downwards drive. Um, if we do close like this, 
you know, uh, that's kind of an indecision. Candle volatility is very low. So we apparently had a fake out, right? Volatility expanded about 20%, came back down. During that expansion phase, we saw Bitcoin go sideways as uh, the price crossed down. Now Stokes are crossed up. So $19,000 on a weekly time frame is going to be a significant pivot. If we start to close below there, um, not going to be good for Bitcoin. Right now it looks like we're out of the woods and still with a chance of a potential bounce. Um, if the dollar does want to cool off here on the weekly time frame, maybe coming into next week, I think tomorrow is going to be pivotal. Uh, tomorrow we have the jobless claims numbers coming out and then CPI. So it's the 4th and the 10th. Going to be some big numbers if jobs come, jobless claims come out hotter than expected. Um, not going to be good for... Um, sorry, I'm going to pull it up. My FX book. The jobs numbers came out today as well. There was some more. There's always a lot of jobs numbers, a lot of housing numbers. There's so many numbers. How do you follow them all? That's why I like to use my FX book, the calendar, getting all the important events. Today is the third, and some numbers did come out today. Non-manufacturing actually came out lower than expected. Um, sorry, estimated was 55, lower than expected. So that was a point for the bears on the U.S. dollar. Um, but that wasn't the only thing that came out today. Jobless claims, initial jobless claims. Yeah, payroll, it's payroll data tomorrow. I forgot what it is, but initial jobless claims came out today uh, at 217,000, lower, not only lower than the consensus, but lower than the previous month. So if less people have jobs, or, or, or not that. If in jobless claims are less, right, meaning more people have jobs, then what Fed is doing is not working. That's why, again, we've been saying it over and over. Hawkish Fed, um, and he had reason to be hawkish. Everything's coming out inflationary. And so that was a big point for the bulls on the dollar. And that's why you can see the dollar moving up right now, Bitcoin coming down. Um, even on the shorter term time frames, yeah, there's a trade I wanted to take. What else do I want to bring up today? Thank God I got this meeting here. I think they just knocked on my door. Um, so tomorrow will be payroll. Easy thing to look at here. Non-farm payrolls and, uh, yeah, non-farm payrolls. That's what, what I'm going to be looking at tomorrow. And then on the 10th, we got CPI next week so tune in for more um, if you have a question don't forget uh, like and subscribe to the channel if you're new we're happy to get you some more updates about cryptocurrency and just the markets in general um, so you know whether to be bullish or bearish take care and have a blessed day